So you want to lead the people, the reviewer, through a process where you're not blowing it up. You're, you're convincing them more and more. So you, we are not asking you, I, I don't actually want you to read this. I want to show you a structure. I want to show you structure, not content. Okay? So typically, the funding partners will give you a template. And that template might look like the way they choose. It's not for you to decide. And in the template that we are working with here, there was design. We were asked to provide an executive summary. OK? So we have already provided the executive summary. And at the end of the executive summary, we say there, this project will investigate. OK? And then we discuss all that. Our findings are primarily aimed at supporting high impact interventions, including gene drive for suppression and modification of malaria vectors. So that is a very high level. You know, that's now the impact statement. The objective is already above it. The objective is above that, that statement. Now, beyond that part, depending on the donor, they might ask several other things. In this case, we are talking about problem statements, and we have defined it in our own way by saying what the problem is. And we have provided some data based on what we already have. Okay? And in addition to the data, we have now said the proposed solution, and we've described that proposed solution here. After that, we have described the project objectives. And you will notice that we are using different colors. We are using font, bold, and light font. We are using a lot of space between, you see like here, there's space here. That space is not for granted. There's space there, there's space all that. This is a different color, that's a different color. We are making sure that because this is a long proposal, the person reading it does not get bored at all. Okay? We are using extremely simple language. Okay? We want to demonstrate successful colonization and genetically characterize Anopheles fenestas from selected areas in Eastern and Southern Africa. Full stop. And then, we have our specific objectives, and there are only three. George did mention earlier that four is probably too many. And here we have three objectives, and they're very clear. And then we go into the method section, which is what I want us to deal with now. So, again, let's focus on just structure. Now, notice that we, are, we have rewritten the objective in front at the top. Basically, we are saying what we are describing here are the procedures towards achieving objective one. You understand? Our objective one is as follows, and these are the procedures towards achieving it. If you are working in a technical area uh, that, and you fear that people might not understand you, you might have a small section called rationale. Why are you doing it? And that rationale allows you to describe more than you could do already in the background. You don't have to do this now. Some of it will come with practice. And then you go straight to activities. So you sub, under your specific objectives, what are the little things that you will do on step one to the last to achieve that objective? And here we are saying activity 1.1. Remember, we are talking about objective one. Now we are saying activity 1.1. And we are writing it in bold, and then we describe that activity in good detail. That is now technical language. So if, for scientific community, this is now where you put your technical language in, in, without losing people. But this is where you demonstrate your capacity as a member of that community. Uh, and this is where you can put a little bit of jargon, not too many, but you are allowed some leeway to do that. Notice that there is space somewhere, and then there is activity 1.1b. There is 
there a diagram, you see this? And this guy produced the diagram, but again, this is an example. Uh, Samson, this is probably the fourth one uh, of the diagram that eventually was submitted. Uh, and because Samson is a mathematician, when he produces the first diagram, uh, he might think that we are understanding, but actually we don't. So we say, okay, uh, this, is, this is what I've already done, or that's what I've already done, we want to adapt it this way. And so we send him back and say, produce another one, produce another one. And here we introduce the concept of beauty. So if you look at the proposal, you see the use of colors, you see uh, the frame, it's got like dotted line. It's not because we are artists, or it's not because of that. It is just that if you're trying to sell science to younger people, you want them to not decide to go dancing instead of doing science. <laughs> you want them to notice that there's beauty in science. You want to be happy writing it. You want to do uh, to continue. And then you see we have some space in there and then you have activity 1.3. There's a bold and then there's some explanation. The references are all in there. They are explained. You have some diagrams where necessary. You know, this is the facility we have. This is what we are going to do. Where it's necessary, you put a diagram. You don't just write. You want to make sure that this thing is as easy as possible to understand. There's space there. There's another space. There's another space. And then you go to the second objective. And for the second objective, again, you have your rationale. And then after the rationale, you have activity 1.1. At 2.1, I mean, you have a figure there, and this is a case where we are doing studies in South Africa, in different countries, and, and in Tanzania. Uh, you know, you have a figure there to illustrate those, you have space, you have activity 2.2, 2.3, and 2.4, and then another figure there of past studies, what have been done. Again, this is a case of mathematical modeling, is illustrating how whatever we want to do could work. And someone asked us early, how do you demonstrate that this thing will work if you don't know? So occasionally, we don't know, but we have a mathematical model that shows that transmission will go to zero if you apply our method. So that is what we post there. And we, because some of the, these mathematical things can be difficult for people to understand, we use diagrammatics to show that. This is all overall about writing a good proposal that is easy to understand. We then have some colors, some space, some figures. And at the end, uh, uh, these are sections that we will talk about tomorrow, and then you describe uh, the rest of it. So before we go into that, I just want to say, OK, that's the end of the section. Brilliant. So we want to say here that what you need to do is you already have your three or four objectives. We want you to describe the steps that you will take to actually achieve those objectives. They have to be very, very logical. You start with the first one. You describe the things you will do to achieve that. You go to the next one. Describe the things you will do to achieve that. And go to the last one and describe the things you will do to achieve that. In that process, make it easy for the reader, because this is where you're putting technical issues, you are demonstrating your know-how. So here you want to simplify it for the reader as much as possible by employing simple tactics such as spacing, font, colors. Remember, it might be printed in black and white, so <laughs> be careful when you use colors, okay? Be, be very careful when you use colors. Don't use things such as light blue, because if you print in black and white, the reader is not going to see it. And you can always try this by printing like we are going to do tonight. Some of the figures, if the legend is color-based, it's possible that when printed it's black and white and so it's useless. So always remember things like that. Some of it will come with practice, but it's really about the ease of reading that is based on structure. Is there a question? <laughs> 